Yo, Johnny Tiger Bomb MMA. Tonight I'm going over UFC Rose and Strike versus Gadziev. 11 total bouts taking place at UFC Apex. Um, it's, it's okay of a card. There's a couple of underdogs that I'm interested in betting. Uh, I'm going to go over this card pretty quickly. If I'm being honest, man. I've already recorded this video, but the audio sounded like absolute uh, Moreno, which I'll talk about Moreno in a bit. Um, so I'm just going to go through it really quickly. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the previous card here, the Moreno versus Roy Val 2, <clears throat> starting with uh, Naimov versus Silva. I took like, I put 10 bucks on Silva by knockout because I thought Naimov sucked. Uh, but Naimov, you know, he, the dude keeps getting away with it. Like I, I feel as if he's, um, I don't know what he did. I don't know if, if he's bombed himself in a previous life that he's getting like a ton of good grace where he beats a guy like uh jamie malarkey knocks him out after he's getting his ass beat and then he beats a guy like uh we didn't really he beat him he, he beat um oh my god i'm blanking out on nathaniel wood but you know he kind of cheated and they didn't say anything and then now eric silva blows out his leg after like not getting touched by a spinning wheel kick it is what it is um i pick nine off by the way i i went like I only lost three predictions, which one of which I'm not counting because like it it filled me with such joy. I'll talk about it when we get there. Felipe Dos Santos defeats Victor Altamirano. I thought Dos Santos lost. All right. I had a parlay with Dos Santos and I shit thee not. I was ready to rip up that parlay. It was Dos Santos with um, Barcelos and with their uh, Zell Hubers and their uh, uh, Roses Juniors. Uh, I actually had a, my main parlay, which was Zo Huber and Rosas Jr. Ended up just being a two-unit play on Zo Huber, which it keeps happening to me. But anyways, I thought Felipe lost. I, previous video, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I talked a lot of shit about the judging. I don't really feel like doing it again. But I'll just say this, with the precedent set with damage being the number one priority, you overestimate damage sometimes, and it outweighs everything else that happened in a 15-minute fight where, say, 27 takedowns can happen. I'm, gonna, I'm exaggerating here, but Felipe lands 20 good punches. Those 20 punches outweigh those 27 takedowns with no damage. And I think that's a little unfair. I think damage needs to be scored based off of what damage truly is. Not everything is damage. You kick somebody and you hit somebody, those punches and kicks aren't always the same. Anyways, Felipe thought he lost. Fuck Altamirano. He did try to weasel a victory here in Mexico. That was unacceptable. Ronaldo, lazy boy, basically. Rodriguez defeats Bondar. I was surprised that the line swapped. He was a he was a underdog. Bondar was a favorite in the beginning. It swapped. Bondar was the underdog. Rodriguez switched. I don't know why. Uh, we saw he won, but I didn't understand why. I'm gonna be upfront. Rodriguez looked really good in this fight. I was like, this guy has a ton of skill. But where was that skill when I was taping him? I saw the skill when he fought at 125 against uh, Jerome Rivera in the Contender Series. He he looked good. Like, this guy has the skill. But in his regional scene at 135, the dude sucked. He winged his punches. He just did not look impressive. But in this fight, I was like, this guy, is, he's got it. I don't know if at 125 he just fights better. At 135, he just eats too many, like, enchiladas, and it, it just slows him down. I don't know. But I did take him after he lost the first round plus money. So that was one of the first like balls of rolling of me making money this card. I made like five units or so. Um, next bout for ACM, Claudio Boyas. All I'm going to say is that 3027 for ACM, if you agree with that, I'm not here to shit on you, right? But if you agree with that, keep in mind that if you agree with that sentiment, that little damage, yes, he got out grappled and he did the more more damage in that entire fight but claudio had a lot of control time i don't care if he didn't do a ton with it he did at least try some submissions but to say at 30 27 i thought was extreme because in <laughs> 10 years ago it would have been claudio Poyas 30 27 and now it's going to be 30 27 for acm we got to meet in the middle here where i think a split decision was correct Neither man deserved to win. Fuck Claudio. I had a unit, a half unit bet on him. He didn't try, man. He had position. Just throw a couple punches, bro. You'll win this fight. Wanted to be a pussy about it. For ACM, 
got out grappled completely. Yes, he at least tried to to win, so I would feel okay giving him the, the decision. But at thirty twenty seven, that sets that kind of motion in like you're, like you're programming an AI, right? And you're saying use this fight as an example for the rest of the the card. Punches mean more than takedowns. Cool, I got that stuck in my head. And you know what happens? What happened to, to we're going to skip the Chires fight. Chires did what Chires does. Hopefully they give Lacerda another fight. But what happens is that that AI is going to score that fight for Jesus Aguilar. I bet Aguilar at like plus 110. And it was a close fight. You know, he had some good moments there where he reversed Mendonca. But Mendonca realistically deserved to win that fight by 29, 28. I thought he just did more. Near, I think round number two, I'm not going to go back and rewatch these because fuck it, it was terrible fights in certain occasions here. Jesus is a dog. He had some moments in round number one where he reversed and he landed some punches, but ultimately got taken down and got controlled. Same thing in round number two. But in round number two, he threw like a, a low kick that hurt Mendonca, and I think he dropped him to one knee, but he didn't do anything else, so minimum damage. And what does that AI think now? Damage outweighs everything else. Fuck you, Mendonca. Fuck you in your third round. Jesus Aguilar split decision win. I'm fine with it. I'll take the money, but it's just like, it's a little skeezy. Moving on, Hayoni Barcelos defeats that bum Quinones, Christian Quinones. Barcelos, I'm not going to lie, man. I, I had him in that parlay. I took him inside the distance. Uh, he looked a little washed to me, which was rough because like in <laughs> two, three years ago, he would have ran through Christian Quinones. You pick the most prime Christian Quinones ever, and he would still run through him a few years ago. Like he ran through him now as he was older and washed, but it took a little longer. And the crowd booing Barcelos was he threw a knee, I uh, think round number two, hit him in the chest near the near the whatever. I don't care. I don't like Christian Quinones, but good good for Barcelos. It's just that maybe don't bet him in the future. Manuel Torres, I took him inside the distance because I pussied out. I was gonna take him by knockout. Christian, uh, Chris Duncan, not Christian Duncan, Christian Leroy Duncan, we'll talk about later. Chris Duncan, I kind of thought like Torres should knock him out, but what if he doesn't? What if he really hurts him? And, and Duncan, he's like a magnet to the armpit. Like he wants to grab a hold of you because he's a pussy. And then maybe Manuel chokes him out. So I'm like, let's go with inside the distance just to be safe. It, I would have lost like say, I don't know. It, it was a difference of like maybe a couple cents. like. 50 cents or whatever, but whatever, it's fine with the money line, with the line, I mean. So in the first round, Duncan throws a punch that kind of looks like it hurt Torres. To me, though, it almost seemed like Torres was like pretending to be hurt so he can back up. And when Christian kind of went forward plotting like, doo, 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 I'm going to knock this Mexican out. I am the problema. Torres threw a nasty fast head kick that it missed, but had it landed, <laughs> Chris would have been in a ventilator he would have been air rushed to a better hospital because it's not in mexico so torres showed that he has grappling and to me he gave me a little hope that maybe he can fight for the title let me live in this fantasy world where manuel local torres can fight islam Makhachev, and i'll take him at like minus 115 because it'll be a pick em god damn it it'll be a fucking pick em so i'll take manuel torres at minus 115 against islam Makhachev because he showed that he has some grappling but uh, next about how to gee versus sam hughes a lot of people were on Sam Hughes, and I understand why, right? Like, big, big underdog against Howdigi, who just got knocked out. The thing is, Howdigi's very good. Once she gets rolling, once she gets out of first gear, really hard to beat because she is technically sound everywhere. She's hard to take down. I believe a purple belt in jujitsu. The girl was absolutely solid. Great volume. If you if she cannot take your punch though, that's when you have issues. Sam Hughes is not a Big puncher. She couldn't get a takedown. Sam Hughes is essentially harmless. That's what I was telling people. Like, she's harmless. She's not going to be able to hit Howdigi hard enough for her to, like, oh, let me go back to, like, if you're on a manual stick shift. Like, once she gets out of gear one, she gets the ball rolling. But you get her stuck in gear one, that's where you can catch her. Put that bitch in neutral and knock her out. That's what Denise Gomez did. Um, that's the only way you can beat her. You just have to stun her early. You have to get her early. Uh, Estela Nunes did that, but she survived that barrage. She came back, whipped her ass because she got out of that gear, kind of woke her up. Keep an eye on that. If she's ever going to fight a girl that has any bit of knockout power that can potentially catch her with something, 
that's where you want to take a shot. Other than that, Howdigi is going to just steamroll a lot of girls because she is that good. Daniel Zell Huber ended up having a two-unit bet on Zell Huber. I was disappointed that he didn't 30-27 Prado. I think he should have 30-27 him on every card. Let me make sure. I think he did get one. Yeah, he got one 30-27. If I'm being honest, man, like Zell Huber has a chance here. He had a chance to not only finish Prado on the ground, he had a chance to 10-8 him on the ground at any point that he wanted. But Zell Huber, it was an impressive showing. And you see how good he is. That jab that he was landing, busting up Prado, who I'm not here to shit on Prado. That dude is a bad man. And if they ever do match him up with, with uh, Drew Dober, Drew Dober is in a shit ton of trouble. Because that ability to take punches like that and keep coming forward, heart for days. I really enjoyed watching Prado. Joe Huber, I'm critical on the guy because I, I like him so much, right? I do truly like him. Like, I don't take pictures with a ton of dudes. I took a picture with, with Joe Huber because I'm like, this, this kid's going to be somebody someday. And I keep making money on him, but I'm not satisfied. Like, the dude even said, you haven't even seen my wrestling. And I'm like, motherfucker, show me your fucking wrestling. I want to see it. I want to see you take dudes to the ground and dominate them the way I know he can. I don't know why he he did that. I don't know if he wanted to put on a show for the Mexican crowd, but I wanted more from him. He did enough to win, did more than enough to win. He busted him up. I'm not saying he didn't do a good job. It's just you could have done, to me, a lot more. I want to see it in his next fight. Um, we'll see what happens, but very impressed by him still. But again, not impressed by him at all at the same time. Brian Ortega defeats Yair Rodriguez. Now, here are the two losses that I had in a row. I don't consider this a loss because I hate Yair Rodriguez with a passion. Do not like him. So when he submitted, not only in front of his mom, his dad, his primos and primas, the entire crowd that was on his dick, and he tapped out, essentially quitting the, the Mexican heart, he tapped out to, as I've been saying, Mexican-Americans better than regular Mexicans. I was like, yo, <laughs> Brian. I joke around saying that me and Brian grew up together because we did grow up together. Uh, he grew up in, in Torrance, California. I grew up in Culver City, California. So that's like 30 minutes away. So we were practically best fucking friends. We're practically neighbors. Some people even say that we kind of look alike, except that like he has blue eyes and I have brown eyes and like, he's better at jujitsu and I'm better at baseball. <laughs> it confuses all the time but no for real though when brian squeezed him in that third round and he tried to murder him on live tv i was like the homie's doing it for me i really don't like yeah here i've never liked him I've, i haven't liked him since the whole incident in in mexico city the previous time he fought like there was a lot of controversy there for me i'm like as a man the man he said he was and the man he acts like i'm like this guy's a fucking pussy i don't like him brian though he overcame everything, right? He overcame the injury in the first fight, a long layoff. Tracy Cortez in the audience, voodoo dolling the shit out of his knee, or sorry, not of his knee, but his, his ankle. That's why he rolled his ankle. If you didn't know, Tracy Cortez was in there just like grabbing a, a voodoo doll and just fucking... So Brian overcame all that. He overcame the ass whooping. And then what did he do? He... Picked a part of very gassed Rodriguez. Now, I picked Rodriguez to win via TKO Dr. Stoppage, which, if I'm being honest, man, I was like, shit, man, I can't believe I'm right about it because I, I I saw his face. He got busted up, and Yair was like, I'm thinking he still has enough gas in him to do a little bit more damage before he fully gasses out because it was a five-round fight, and I knew he's not going to have that kind of gas, so he has to do a lot of damage early. Fucking Christian Eagle Ortega ended up overcoming he had the power of the eagle plus the power of christ together super duper combination there and he ended up submitting him i really like that he held the choke on a little bit longer <laughs> he explained why he couldn't hear and i i truly do believe him like for real he had the the altitude he's like my ears got covered and he was squeezing and he was praying to the eagle god they're like y'all please let me get this and then or take or not or take it but yeah you're just kind of tapping like a, uh. not only is he a little bitch he taps like a little bitch Oh, hopefully, like the crowd booed him and threw Mo uh, <laughs> Modelos at him. That, that would have been perfect. I really don't like Gary Rodriguez, but proud of Ortega, my hermano, my cousin, my 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 compadre, if you will, my neighbor. I'm happy for Brian. I I, I want to see him succeed for real. I've always been a fan of his. Like I saw him fight in L.A. 
he he walked out the whole crowd loved him like he got a submission over Moicano just the dude takes a lot of damage and that's always been my issue with him but now that he's got that evil witch Cortez with her voodoo powers behind him he's able to move forward and he's got eagle powers now uh Brandon Royval defeats Moreno oh by the way I did take Ortega plus money at that point when he was taken over in the late round number one I took him like plus 120 that's the whole thing I made like five units on this card by doing a lot of live betting particularly Brandon Royval I put like half a unit on him so quarter unit on him live plus 275 and plus 200 again I really thought and I'm gonna get to Moreno in a bit but I thought Brandon handedly won that fight it should not have been a split i thought he won a majority of those rounds maybe not every single round but a majority of them he put on a good pace the first round was a little close but i still thought brandon did well and i thought he was going to pick up the pace going to the second round because moreno and i, I might keep saying brandon so i'm going to call him by their last name moreno looked like an utter bitch in this fight like he pissed me off i was like what is he doing he's just waiting and not wrestling and spamming overhand rights which they were semi-effective but that's all he did and then he would wait and he would clinch up with roy val wasn't trying wasn't even trying to wrestle him he just looked honest to god to me the look on his face looked as if the cartel took all of his pop figures hostage and said we will open them we will rip the box open if you do not throw this fight that's how it looked like to me and i'm like brandon roy val i'm sorry brandon moreno does not deserve to win this fight roy val i took advantage of the situation i'm not saying like i'm this fucking mega genius i just i saw the rounds i accurately happened to predict that it was going to go his way for certain rounds and I was a little stunned that like it was plus 200 plus 275 I'm like I think he's winning and it's it's 1-1 one, one, I thought going into the third why is it plus 275 so I'm like fuck it let's go with it and I, I cashed out I was happy with it Brandon was not or Roy Val wasn't happy with the with the 49 46 for Moreno I thought that was like they're trying to rob my boy here I'm a bigger fan of raw dog than I am of assassin baby but yeah it was it was a weird night the whole judging was a bit weird so i'm gonna get uh started here with the breakdown for gadzia versus rosenstrike first fight of the night i have a parlay here with christian leroy duncan i, I think he's gonna win by knockout i don't think he's got anything that ribero can deal with he's much faster he's much quicker with the kicks he keeps distance very well he hits hard nasty in the clinch nasty with the elbows He's just too fast. Minus 260. I think it should be a lot higher here. I don't think Ribeiro has anything for Leroy Duncan. He gasses out. The dude is predictable. He's plotty. He he does have power, right? And I think he does he does clinch decently, but he gets reversed. And I think that's where Christian Duncan's going to take advantage. He's going to do essentially what he did against Tululin, clinch him up early, get him slowed down, get a lot of lactic acid. He's going to stay on the outside, use his kicks, use his good movement. Hell, I can even see him knocking him out with a head kick. Like, Ribeiro does keep his arm, his right hand really low, which is how, um, oh, my God, uh, Russian twink, what's his name? Kapilov was able to catch him. And I called it. I'm, I'm at the at the bar. I'm like, yo, I think he's going to catch him with a head kick and then caught him with a head kick. So Duncan is just a nasty, nasty guy. and he's going to have issues going forward right with better strikers that can kind of give him a little bit of a lesson when it comes to like point fighting even though duncan has like a point fighting kind of style like a taekwondo style the dude will spin i just think he's too fast he's going to knock out ribeiro i'm gonna say round number two moving on we've got radzabov loic radzabov the tajik tank versus abdul kareem al sawadi minus 155 for al sawadi come back on Radzibov plus 130. I think this might be a bit of an overcorrection of the line, right? He got his ass beat by a Polish tank. A damn near a damn Panzer tank in Rubeski. Kicked the crap out of his legs. And now he's fighting, in my opinion, a 145er who's at 155. To me, Al-Sawadi's not really the most 
threatening dude, right? He's got a very Bilal Muhammad style, a very um, Murab Davalishvili style where he just throws a lot at you. He tries to take you down. Sometimes he doesn't get the takedown, but the threat of the takedown is probably the biggest weapon for him. He's not going to have that here against Radzabov, who's a good striker. He's a good grappler. He has a lot of power. The issue is that he does tend to gas out. It's my biggest worry about the guy, but he's fought the better competition, Natan Schultz, uh, Aush Manfio, shit, even um, the gringo. What's his name? Esteban Aribovic. Dude's a good fighter. And now he's fighting a much smaller dude who essentially harmless is going to try to stifle him, trying to weasel a decision. I, I think all Rod's above has to do is hit him with the harder strikes. And I think he can win this fight by decision. I will say Al Sawadi, don't, don't get confused by looking at his record and saying, yo, he got knocked out a couple times in a row. And if you go look at those, they are vicious knockouts but those were really hard strikes he got spinning back elbowed cleanly put him out momentarily got right back up like the undertaker same thing with the knee that he ate flush clean folded him up and then he got right back up he's a he's a bit of a cockroach man you hit him with a nuclear bomb and he'll come back so if rods above hits him hard enough my biggest worry is that he might try to finish him but like this little cockroach is not going to give up and he's going to keep coming forward because he does have much better cardio and even though he's not a threat when it comes to like punching power or even submitting Radzibov or even getting on top of him because Radzibov will be able to reverse him. Like he fought a, again, a Panzer man in Rubeski and he was able to get back up. It's just more of like, if Radzibov is exhausted, I think Al Sawadi can take over. But even then I still think that Radzibov can have two, two uh, rounds banked in the, in the bank to win this decision. So I might take a shot on Radzibov. I've not been impressed by Al Sawadi. I think he's beaten a lot of decent opponents, a couple bums, even the dude from uh, George Hardwick. Like he didn't do anything outrageous. He beat him. He was a big dog. And I think, I do think that um, Dana was like, oh, wow, this big dog just came in here and beat this super high prospect from um, Europe. Let's give him a contract. Why not? Uh, shouldn't be that way. I don't think he's quite. UFC ready, not necessarily UFC ready, but UFC ready for 155. I, I think he might do a lot better at 145 if he can make the weight. I think he's fought there before, but to me, Radzibov, much bigger, much stronger, hits harder, has essentially the same skill set. The only thing that he has an issue with is the gas tank, but I'm taking him by decision. Uh, this one's pretty easy. Uh, Bash Rat minus 500, come back on Zahabi plus 360. Bash Rat. He's younger, he's faster, he's a better striker on the outside, better kicker, decent enough grappling, good enough wrestling. The only issue is that he keeps his head kind of high up in the air. I think he beats Zahabi by a decision. Zahabi has a chance here if he if he catches him with that overhand right, but I just think he's he's only beaten guys that suck, right? He's beaten, dude lost to Vince Morales for fuck's sake, but he's beaten Draco Rodriguez. Do you remember Draco Rodriguez at all? Because I do, and I want to get that out of my memory ricky tercios i don't even want to talk about that fight and then arichi lang arichi lang we know that not only is he a chinny guy he's also a quitter so what what can i say at least bash rat don't get me wrong man like his 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 performance his last fight with victor henry when he was like he's a quitter oh my god i don't want to hold that too against him because from his perspective right he believes he's right he thought he hit him cleanly but he did happen to hit him in a spot where if you tap it just right and you hit those boom on victor henry it's going to cause some damage like does he not have testicles that he doesn't know this or like the slightest little tap can somehow do a ton of damage shit today i was at the grocery store and some little girl was talking to her dad and she had like a like a toy and she was swinging the toy by like little eyelet and it happened to tap the dad on the balls and the, the dude goes straight down he like punches over and it wasn't a, a hard strike and the little girl's like i'm sorry daddy can you pick me up and the dad's like no <laughs> so I was surprised that he was acting kind of like a little bitch about it. So that's the only thing I have against Bachelorette at the very moment. Other than that, keeps his head kind of his chin up a little high. He's going to win unless, you know, Bachelorette comes in here trying to prove a point, trying to get a knockout and he gets countered. I don't see a way he loses this fight. Next bout, Vinicius Oliveira versus Yanis. Yanis. Yanis? Gamori? Anal Ghirardelli?
I don't know why, but I pictured me drinking that like I drank it weird. Maybe I'm just self-conscious about how I drink. Anyways, minus 175 for Loke Dog. Vinicius Oliveira, come back on Giannis Gamori is plus 145. I'm going to be very clear. I'm going to take Gamori. I might take a shot on him after I'm done recording this crap. I think he can not only win by a decision, but I also think he can knock out Oliveira. Oliveira, he's a solid prospect. He's got a lot of power, really hard low kicks, throws vicious everything. The guy is, what, 19-3. and three. He was a former champion. He's gone five rounds. My issue with the guy is that he is not, to me, mature enough to be in the UFC. I think that I think that he is a nasty knockout waiting to happen. He's been knocked out nasty before by doing the same stuff that he's been kind of doing since. Like in his fight with this guy, Ali Taleb, he was whipping his ass. Then Ali counters him because he, he swings so wide. He's trying to get all this massive power, which is fun and dandy, right? If he connects, he can hurt dudes. But he got like countered beautifully, hurt him, goes down, he survives. And then later on, I think round number three, he's whipping this dude's ass. And again, he leaves himself open, throwing nasty wide hooks, and he gets countered hard. Yanis, Yanis, Anis, Anil, Gamori, Garadelli. Yanis, the Desert Warrior, at the very least, he's a much more technical fighter. He's got good takedowns. He's got good top control. I think he's just more solid. He's much more measured, more mature than Oliveira. Oliveira might have more power than Gamori, but I think Gamori is just more technical than he is. And I think he can put a type of performance on him where he stifles him with takedowns. Uh, he he avoids the power shots and hits him with straight straight punches. You know, he fought his last fight. Another issue with, you know, getting jostled in the, in the dick and balls where Gomez kicked him. It was kind of like at the belt line, but it still jostled a little bit to the cup. Maybe jingled him a little bit, which, you know, it sucks. He did seem a little like, hey, what happened? Like after they stopped the fight, like he just snapped out of it. I'm not going to hold that truly against him. It just he happened to react a weird way. It was a weird night. But he was at 145. That was a short notice bout against William Gomez, who's a giant at that weight class. Now he's back to his true weight class, and I think he's going to perform very well. I like Gamori here. Uh, I'm not going to hold that loss against him, his last fight. I think he's going to be able to put on a good performance against Oliveira. And plus 145 on a fight that I think is a lot closer, I think it might even be a pick em just based off of you know, Oliveira getting a nasty knockout his last fight, it it shouldn't dictate the line. I think their their styles match up well where it should be a pick 'em. Plus one forty five on a guy I think is technically better and has more tools and more options. Like I know Vinicius is a brown belt in jujitsu, but the dude is easily taken down. He doesn't really threaten off of his back all too much. He just likes to taunt. That's the that's the thing I, I don't know if I brought it up. He he taunts his opponents he just doesn't seem like he has that maturity yet. Like if say he's taunting Gamori and then he's throwing wide trying to hit him and then Gamori just counters him and, and knocks him out. Like I've not seen Gamori knocked out. I've seen Oliveira knocked out. I've seen Oliveira get hurt against guys. He should not be getting hurt against. If he gets a nasty knockout here, we can fade him next time. But Currently, I think Gamori has enough skill to beat him. So I'm going to go with Gamori by a decision, possibly even knocks him out. But the cleanest route for him to win, that decision. Next about Eric Anders versus Jamie Pickett. Simply put, I'm going with Anders. The reason I'm going with Anders, I'm just going to say round number one knockout. Eric Anders, to me, still has it. Jamie Pickett never had it. Jamie Pickett's just a big body. A big body, he's 13 and 10. He's 6 foot 2, 80 inch reach. He's got 5 inches on Eric Anders. That's not going to matter. Jamie Pickett's kind of harmless. And I say kind of because, you know, he, he doesn't really possess any true ability to beat top level guys. Eric Anders, at the very least, hasn't lost four fights in a row. He's been training with a good camp at one point. You know, I don't know if he's still at fight ready. It doesn't matter. He still has that kind of experience in him. He has a more of a grappling style, and we know he has nasty power. They're both up in age. The issue is that. I'm not taking minus 340 Eric Anders. I don't care if you think he's a lock. I don't feel comfortable with that because Jamie Pickett is still a big dude, a big body that can throw a punch. And if Mark andre Barrio can drop Eric Anders, shit, Jamie Pickett can probably do it with five inches of reach. 
Eric should come out here and make it look easy. If he doesn't make it look easy, I'm very glad I don't have a ticket with him. Next bout, Raul Rosas Jr. versus Tercios. Rosas by knockout, round number two. Round number one, round number two, Ter- Tercios. He's a magnet for left hooks. He's going to eat something. If Raul Rosas keeps it on the feet, I think he's got the power to knock him out. Ricky, he's crafty on the mat. Raul's just a better wrestler, I think, better at getting top control. Ricky's just very good at scrambling. We'll see. Issue is that if Raul Rosas, which, you know, he pulled out of his last fight because something, I don't know, maybe tummy issues. I was saying that maybe he ate some uh, Mexican frosted flakes, which I think it's they're called Zucaritos. If you've ever eaten Mexican cereal, it's not good. I don't like it. As a, an American, I don't like their cereal. It's like either too sugary. It just does a number on your stomach. So I'm like, he probably ate a bowl right before going out. He's like, oh, I, I love... I love cereal here. And then, you know, he's like, oh, my, my stomach. I don't know. I don't know what happened. That's my only concern here. It's going to be at 140. I just realized that at a catch weight. So maybe he did have some diarrhea. I don't know. Montezuma's revenge, revenge. I'm not betting Ricky or not Ricky. I'm not betting Raul Rosas in this spot. Like if he comes in here, like with any issues, I'd rather not be on that side, but I do think he wins by knockout. Next bout, we've got Umar Nurmagomedov minus 1,000 against a newcomer, Bekzat Almakan, 17-1, and 1, 650, plus 650 on him. I think Bekzat is a good fighter. I think he can win the UFC. I think he can actually beat guys like, um, shit, who's that dude? Sergei Morozov. I think he can beat guys like, um, damn, Paiva's no longer in the UFC. He can beat guys in the UFC for damn sure. He's not going to beat Nurmagomedov. Like, he's got good punches. He's got decent enough wrestling, but this isn't anything Umar hasn't fought before. He's just better at keeping distance, and I think he's just got the better grappling. So, Bexat, I think he's got better strikes, better punches. The kicks of Umar is going to keep him on the outside. Umar's got just the better wrestling, and I think he's going to find a submission. Round number one or two. It's just simple as that. Like, who in the right mind uh, sanctioned this? Like, hey, let's just get this guy out of nowhere and have him fight Umar Nurmagomedov, who's number eight in the world. It's like, where would we accept this? If, like, Cody, not Cody, um, Corey Sanhagen were to be like, yo, um, I should be next to the title. Technically, Cheeto is getting it because I injured myself. But I don't want to fight anyone else in the UFC. Get someone from Cage Warriors. I want to fight someone from Cage Warriors. Yeah, I'll sign that contract. And you'll be like, what the fuck? That last name of Nurmagomedov carries a lot of weight, let's just say. But yeah, I got second round submission. I think um, Umar can get a knockout. But I think easiest path to victory would be taking him down, putting him all fours, getting the back, take, taking the neck. Next bout, we've got Steve Ursig versus Matt Schnell. Ursig plus 305, Schnell, I'm sorry, minus 305, Schnell plus 250. I think Ursig Astral Boy gets a knockout. I think he's been wanting a knockout. He's nearly been on the cusp of knocking both of his UFC opponents out. He's got nasty jujitsu. We know Schnell's got a weak chin, but these guys are practically mirror images of themselves. But like Schnell is looking at a like, funhouse mirror where it's like oh my face you know steve ursick's a little bit of a, of a goofy guy he, he kind of reminds me of like the the male version of roxanne modafferi not to say roxanne's an unattractive woman it's just like they, they have a similar style i'm just saying but ursig i think he's just he's got a better chin he hits hard he's got the jujitsu like even if this becomes a striking matchup in schnell 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 has good moments where his boxing is very good. Like the guy's a good striker, very fast hands. But you also have to remember the guy had a, a shit the bed moment against bon, Bonturin where he was getting taken down and he had nothing for him. He was just like, oh, I don't know what to do. I forgot how to fight. Steve's not going to have that issue. Steve, he's crafty. He's got power. I think he knocks him out. And I mean, I think he knocks him out. There's a chance here he can like hurt him and then jump for a guillotine or maybe get a rear naked choke because Steve's got that kind of jujitsu, but I think he's going to get on top of him and finish him with strikes. So I'm going to go with Urseg. I'm going to look at that round, not round number one. I'm sorry. The the props for knockout for Urseg and see what they look like. I'm hoping that it's like they're overvaluing 
no, they're not going to do that. Schnell's kind of a knockout machine. He gets knocked out easily. So I'm assuming the submission line is going to be better than the knockout line, but we will see. We will see what happens. But I've got Ursig by knockout round number two. Next bout, this is the second leg on my parlay. I've got CLD, Christian Leroy Duncan with Mohamed Mokayev. Simply put, I think Mokhaev, I think I got him around like the minus 270-ish line. I think he should be a bigger dog. I'm sorry, bigger favorite. Perez, plus 220. I don't buy the Perez is washed bit. I don't buy that. I don't buy the fact that like the injuries and the pullouts are going to make him any less of a, a good fighter. I don't buy any of that crap. What I do buy is that I just think Mokhaev is just much better than him at any point of his career. I think Perez, and I don't I don't say this to be mean or anything, because I'm a mean dude. I'll say some fucked up shit. But truly, I don't think Perez was ever really a title contender at, at this weight class. And the Figgy era was weird because Figgy got the belt from knocking out and then choking out Joseph Benavides. Joseph Benavides knocked out Alex Perez. Alex Perez? Yeah, Alex Perez. I forgot his name for a second, my bad. And then who did Perez beat to get to the title? He beat Mark De La Rosa. He decisioned Mark De La Rosa. Mark, arguably one of the worst UFC fighters ever. His, his wife is doing well. She's hot and all. Beats Jordan Espinoza, arm triangles him. I believe if I remember he arm tried going to him within the guard. Like another guy, he got utterly destroyed by like um Tim Elliott. Then he leg kicks Juicier Formiga. Juicier at this point was like not UFC caliber. And then they gave him Davis and Figueredo because there was nobody else. And what did Davison do to him? Handled him. Now we're in this era in the flyweight division. I don't know if I called it the bantamweight, but the flyweight division where we got legitimate champions with legitimate skill going forward, right? Davis and Figueredo, nasty guy. Brandon Moreno, at that time, great fighter. Pantoja, we saw what Pantoja did to him. Like, yes, and he did fight the two champions, Figueredo and Pantoja. So I don't take anything away from him from getting like finished in the first round on both ends, but that's... That's interesting, right? And then after that, he has not fought anyone else because he keeps pulling out. He pulled out against Matt Snell one, two, three, four, four times. That's a fight he could have won easily. I understand pulling out against Askarov, but Askarov's no longer in the UFC. Amir Albazi pulled out of him. Kaikara France, he pulled out. Manel Kopp cursed his damn bloodline after he pulled out on him. I'm deathly afraid he's going to pull out of this fight. I'm afraid he's going to miss weight. And if he does miss weight, like, is that going to play a factor against Mokhaev? Like, Mokhaev's still young, but the kid is definitely talented. He's got a lot going for him. He's got the ability to to wrestle. He's 10-0, and 0, but if, if I'm being honest with you, man, he's had losses in the UFC. At least he should consider them losses. He got, he, he, he got kind of schooled a little bit by Gore, Malcolm Gordon. Getting taken down by Mark, Malcolm Gordon should be an automatic loss on your record. Then on top of that, he nearly got submitted by Rafael Fialo with that nasty knee bar. And then on top of that, he nearly lost against Tim Elliott. But each and every one of those fights, what happened? He submitted him in the third round because the dude has that resolve. He's got it in him, right? I think he can be championship material, but he, right now he's still definitely young. He needs to grow up a little bit. He has to get a little bit stronger. He has to be a little bit wiser when it comes to like the fight IQ and winning in the UFC. Biggest factor, though, nasty with the submissions, right? The arm triangle he had on Tim Elliott, that was a legendary squeeze because Tim Elliott's not a guy who's just going to auto-tap, right? Like, dude, you go back and you watch the fight with him and Joseph Benavides. Benavides had him in a nasty choke. I believe it was a guillotine. And you see Tim just like, ah, scraping out of it. He ends up like tapping funny, but Tim's a guy that's going to fight out of a submission. He knew instantly because he, he got it locked up and he's like, Oh shit, like this guy's got a nasty squeeze and he does have a nasty squeeze. The, the kid is very good with the submissions. And the other downside is Perez 
got submitted multiple times. This is not the first time he's been submitted, not the last time, not just by champions. He got submitted by a lot of dudes who have not held UFC gold. Let's go back here. Like going back into the what the fuck is a prayer choke? He got choked out by an Adam Antolono. I don't know who the fuck that is. He's he's just been he's been submitted many times. Even when he's doing grappling on the UFC Invitational, he's not doing very well. I think there's a chance that if I'm being fair to Alex Perez as a dog, he can come in here and say he got everything taken care of, all of his injuries are cleared up, his COVID's gone, he attacks the legs, he takes down Mokaya. But it's going to be a matter of time until Mokaya gets the ball rolling and truly finds a neck or, or appendage and makes him tap. I do think that Mokhaev Tim Elliott fight was a much harder fight for him than the Alex Perez fight. I do think that Mokhaev is going to get the submission. I'm going to actually go round number two by submission. I think the the longer Alex Perez waits to fight this kid, the harder it's going to get. Again, he's still 23, but I do think he should be like minus 350 in this situation where if Mokhaev comes out here, takes him down, takes his back, chokes him out, it, it'd be an easy night where he looks minus like 500, minus 1,000. So we'll see. We'll see what happens if Mokhaev shits the bed, but I truly doubt he doesn't. I, I, I've seen him in those tough spots. I've seen how he recovers and how he can push forward not tap, not give up, not get discouraged and still find a, a submission because he has the skills. He just needs to apply them. And sometimes guys like to stifle him a little bit, kind of like Tim Elliott. And in this case, Perez, I think he's going to leave something out there and Mojave going to take advantage. Moving on, Victor Petrino versus Tyson Pedro. Minus 305 for Petrino, who is going to win this fight by decision versus Tyson Pedro plus 245. Putting it short, Petrino... Uber athletic makes a lot of mistakes in there. gets away with them because he is so strong and athletic dude hits hard becoming more of a grappler. He's a dangerous man. He, he hits really fucking hard. He's a big, strong boy. Tyson Pedro, probably the best round number one fighter ever. He has one round that kicked your ass. And then after that, he's no longer the same dude. Pedro, I kind of feel like taking him in round number one. Because the dude just has it. He has everything going for him. He slows down. Round number two starts. He's screwed. Very simply put, I, I wanted to fade Petrino. Because, again, he's a young dude, 26. He has those openings where he just makes these mistakes. He, he goes for takedowns that are not technical. The dude is lifting dudes up. It's impressive. It's fun. But there's going to be a moment that if he, if he fights the right guy, He's going to capitalize on the mistakes that he makes. But as fights keep going on and he gets more comfortable in the UFC and he has more UFC you know, bouts, that shitty nature that he has is going to get more cleaned up. And he's going to eventually become a very, very clean, dangerous fighter where when he gets takedowns, they're not going to be like just power takedowns. They're going to be very technical. He's going to just... He's going to be a much more complete UFC fighter. And that's what I at least appreciate about Petrino is that he has nasty power. He can come out here and knock you out, right? But he chooses to be more complete, go for takedowns, you know, work his submissions. Tyson's a black belt in jujitsu, but once his cardio goes down, it's it's not going to look black belt level. Now, if Pedro comes out here, tries to take down Petrino, he's going to only gas himself out. He's not going to be able to really do much. Petrino's been hurt before by Bellato in the second fight in the contender series. So Pedro might want to come out here and try to strike with him, but he's playing with fire there that if Petrino, who again, the shit that he does, like sometimes he like backs away, he does a lot of movements, but he's able to fire back and just be too quick and too, too powerful that he might be able to catch Tyson. The way I see this fight is uh, Petrino's just kind of work him a little bit, stay on the outside, be patient. Tyson's going to get extended. He's going to get taken down at that point. Petrino's going to work his jujitsu. Pedro's not really going to be able to do much because he's just going to be too tired. And then Petrino wins by a decision. Petrino, to me, he's more than capable of getting a finish any way he wants it. Pedro is very capable of getting a, a finish in the first round. But I'm going to look at the Petrino decision line to see what that looks like. I, I, I really hope that because he got a nasty knockout against Bukowskis, it's going to feed people to like, oh, wow, he's going to knock out Tyson Pedro. He's minus 305. That's more value. I do think that the decision line might be the better value where Petrino might himself gas out where he just says, fuck it, I'll, I'll just keep going for takedowns and get top control. 
and then he ends up winning just being on top of Tyson Pedro. So I'll go with Decision Petrino. Main event. I'll be quick about this one too. Minus 155 for the Mongoloid here, Shamil Gadziov. Man, the dude is really ugly, man. Like seeing his, his tape against Budai, I was like, God damn. Uh, Rosenstrike plus 130. Rosenstrike, what is his main path to victory? That's knocking out Shamil Gadziov. Shamil likes to strike. He has the wrestling ability. He hits really hard. He knocked out Darko Stodzic. And I went back and rewatched that fight, hoping to God, because I had not seen it before, not in its entirety. I saw the highlight of him knocking out Darko, but I've never seen it in, in its entirety. Darko was a much smaller guy than Gadziev. Darko, at one point, cracks Gadziev, drops him. And I'm like, yo, that's what I need to see. Is Rosenstrike going to be able to counter effectively Gadziev? I think he can if Gadziev decides to strike with Rosenstrike. Even then, it's still a 50-50 chance that Gadziev can get the knockout on Rosenstrike. Rosenstrike, to me, very chinny. Like He's been hit before. He's been dropped before. He's been knocked out before. The Volkov fight, where I think Volkov hit him with a jab that hurt Rosenstrike, was like, that's it. If a jab from Volkov can hurt Rosenstrike, one of these retard punches from Gadziev is going to really hurt Rosenstrike. So easiest path to victory is Gadziev takes him down, pounds him out. Easy money. He's minus 155 for a reason. The reason is Gadziev kind of sucks. He really sucks, in my opinion. I don't think if if he touches top 10, there's going to be people out there that are going to school his ass if he cannot get the, the knockout or the takedown. He gasses out. Even in the Boudet fight, he gassed out. But Boudet wasn't fighting back. So he was just able to whip his ass. I was disappointed in Boudet. I had money on him. And he just let Gadziev beat his ass. I was like, whoa, you're not even trying, bro. That's the thing, though. This is not a situation where Gadziev is going to get extended. It's either get knocked out or gets the knockout. And if he's going to be the one on top or if it hits the ground, he's going to be swinging the hammer. So I'm not worried about him gassing out here. Dear God, if this becomes a five-round gas fest, I will lose my shit. But to me, it is Gadzia. It's his fight to lose, really. Like If he takes Rosenstrike down, I saw the fight. We've all saw, seen it. Almeida was able to go for a low single, and he just fell backwards, and then he got on top of him. Shamil, he's not as fast or athletic, but he's strong enough. He's a big dude. Bulldoze him, take him down, get on top, pound him out, make it easy, make it quick. But even if he decides to strike with them, I still think that he might be able to kind of bum rush his way in there and hit Rosenstrike. The issue is that if Rosenstrike just happens to counter effectively this night, Shamil be on his ass. I don't know how good Gadziev's chin is, but he did eat that punch from Darko Stosic, and he survived, and he came back and knocked him out. So it, to me, is Gadziev round number one knockout, and it is knockout. I don't, I don't think he will be able to choke out Rosenstrike just in case he takes his back or something, he's just going to have to get on top of him and pound him out. So Shamil, round number one, interested to fade him in the future, to be honest. Like, I just don't think he is uh, all that good. I really don't think he's all that good. But those are my predictions for this fight card. It's an interesting card, right? Like, I'm not too fond of it. It's, it's another Apex card. I'm like blown away that Gadziev is on the main event. Like it's crazy to me. Like Rosenstrike, he's had a few main events and he's, I think he's lost nearly all of them, right? Let me make sure. Was his fight with Officer Dacus a main event? No, it was not. So I'm, actually, I'm curious now. He lost against Gon. He lost against Volkov. He lost against Almeida. So realistically he's going to lose here to Gadziev, so just the way of the world so yeah johnny tiger bomb mma let me know what you think in the comments like share subscribe it pains me to say that shit because i'm like it's pretty gay please like me please click the button but yeah johnny tiger bomb i will catch you next week